Well, I think it's time for me to give this one a bit of a howdy duty. So yes, I did just make a mid 90s MPV and it does seem a little too soon to return to doing that already, but I really, really want to give this one a try and I really want to try fitting a, a big engine in there, something big and American. I want to kind of go with the Mueller type brand and stick a V8 in there. So the year is 1980 or older and we have to pick a body. Do we try to fit it in a mini car? Yes, I think we do. New project. How big of a V10 can we fit in here? I can't go V10, oh come on. V16? We can fit a three liter V16 in here. Oh dear God. They want it to be relatively fuel efficient for the era, which is a 70s kind of car and still be able to go 220 kilometers an hour. This is going to be quite the conundrum. There we go, 115 kilowatts. Let's see what this thing will do <laughs> in a, uh, you know what, let's give it a quick listen. Oh yeah, let's deafen him. All right, let, let's see what the mileage is, will be on a vehicle like this. So we need to be less than 11, okay. So we are not quite within that range, unfortunately. And $25,000 max. What, are, what was our price here? Nice, we are under budget. Pretty good. Completely oversteery mess? Yeah, that's what you get for last time, not actually viewing my car, right? You've brought this upon yourself. There, yeah, medium combat has fixed all the issues. Oh dear. Okay, time to have a look at the rest of the things. Are we still at our good price? Oh my god, we are so cheap. Okay, so 1980 or older, check. Must be wagon MPV, check. Five full seats minimum, check. No semi-slicks, ball bearing turbos or wings, check. Regular 91 reg, yep, that is correct. That is correct, minimum top speed of 220. Yes, we are way over that. 25 drivability, yes, we have that. 15 comfort, ah, we don't have that. Damn it, 40 plus safety? Damn it, we don't have that either. Now we do. And 57 reliability, yes we have that. So the only thing that we don't have is comfort. So, how much money do we have? We have, we have $7,600 to spend on say, interior. So, premium, not enough. Sport, no, that was worse. Luxury. There we go, done. I think we have decent brakes now. This took a lot of finagling. We have gone up to 16 inch wheels though, which is not entirely realistic. And yes, we have heard our comfort rating. And since we upgraded the radio, we're down to downgrade the seats, which made it even cheaper. Isn't that just fan diddly tastic? Our fuel economy has gone a little bit out the window, so we might have to do something about that. So the very last thing to do is to just help our fuel mileage just a little bit more and we'll be done. Okay, we are under price. Do we have the drivability? Our drivability is, wait, hold on, let's go through the checklist. Yes, 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 almost. Yes, 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 and yes. Now I can cheat and put the quality of the tires up, helping everything except for safety, which is fine. And now we just gotta make sure, no, okay, we're a little bit over the price now. <laughs> there we go. All we did was cheat a little bit with quality sliders on the tires, but that is entirely within the rules because there's nothing here that says anything about quality sliders, right? So some may call that cheating and some may just uh, think of it as like, good car design everywhere else and finally using the leftovers in that area. If I didn't mention it, I do have a 6.1 liter V8 in here. <laughs> Before we fudge everything up, let's just go ahead with that and try to make this A86 thing, looking thing, uh, look good. Which, for me, is pretty hard. Wait, there's racing stripes? Oh my god. Well, here we have our Yandu Poot. Now, the Yandu is a brand which I had before, which felt a little bit Asian, so... Uh, sorry, a little bit Japanese, so I thought I would bring it in here for this version. And I've done a few little things here and there. I may as well go in and show you what it is that I've done, because I am a little bit proud. So the first thing you may notice is I did copy the AE85 thing, where glass is in the grill with some perspex. I got the extra little bits of grill here on the front. Which I thought was fun to do. The side here is very basic, you've just got the basic trim along here. 
the rear tail lights I got to a point where I'm happy. The interior, we've done uh, some inserts there, some nice colors, some door handles and door cards. Uh, as is, I am really excited for this thing to be an absolute handful, considering it's got 99 point something percent drivability. And it should be really light, except for the fact that I've added a whole bunch of fixtures on here, which might actually end up making it heavy. You know what? How much does this actually weigh? It reckons it weighs 1,222 kilograms, which is quite heavy. Is there any change to the price? The price is still good. So everything else should still work and be good. Do I export it and hand it to him with the turned wheels? <laughs> no, I'm not going to be a dick. I'm going to actually fix that. Now, last time I exported this car, I was nice to him. I gave this car actually handleable suspension. After I finished that video, I went back, I made it a longer body, which fixed all the issues immediately. And then he doesn't even look at my car. You just, I can't, I can't believe it. He, I feel slighted. So what I plan to do this time is give him a handful of a car to kind of, you know, give him a bit of his comeuppance. <laughs> but if it does actually handle well, and I think you'll be able to handle it. Maybe we'll just leave it at 99.5% drivability. It's got high enough drivability. It's within his score range. It's got more than 25 drivability. See that? Yeah. Oh, good. Now, the question is, is what sort of map will he take an MPV on? It could be West Coast. It probably wouldn't be Utah. Probably wouldn't be something like Small Rocks for that. I doubt it's going to be off-road. I get the feeling it's probably just going to be automation test track or something, but... I am going to go with Jungle <laughs> Jungle Rock Island. It seems that I spell Yandu wrong. Whoops. Okay, put your bets on the table. <laughs> Write down in the comments what you think this vehicle's... Is it going to handle well, or is this thing going to be a complete nightmare with an incredibly low revving, giant 6.1 liter V8? What do you guys think? Let's give it a try. Lots of wheel spin. Okay, but still quite controllable at this point. Oh, a little bit of oversteer and it's gone. No! Well, let's see if we know how to handle a car. So lots of wheel spin. We're going to try to get it under control. Come up here and turn and we go going around. Maybe we should control this manually by ourselves, considering that he does that as well. I could go into the steering wheel, but I don't particularly want to. I think that we are just fine doing what we're doing. Come on. Okay, so... I might see if there was... No, there was only lockers as an option. There was no limit and slip differential, which is quite unfortunate. And it goes around. Oh, boy. All right, then. Well, let's keep trying. Oh, come on. Let's... Come on. Oh, dear. Did I... Okay, let's try seeing if it was the suspension that was just stuffed up there. And, or if there is actually a problem with this car going downhill. Oh, oh, there is actually a problem with it going downhill. Oh, that's not particularly great and oh around again oh boy <laughs> okay so this car is quite the handful but if you just feather it through a lot you are actually going to do quite well being able to save this thing maybe i will bring the brakes down a little bit because there is no abs and this thing likes to lock up just a little bit too much aside from that it's pretty good let's uh go take these fixes over to automation put them in and then bring it back to automation for a lap around the test track. You know what? Actually, maybe I'll leave it with the uh, amount of oversteer that it has. Because this is actually a little bit of a controllable drift car. So maybe it wasn't the worst choice. Okay, well, I, th I think he should be able to handle it with it. If he can't handle it, then... Oh, my God. Oh, oh, this, this thing is a veritable dream. As it revs all the way up to... Four and a half thousand RPM before it red lines because I needed a low rev. Oh, oh, damn it. Okay, well, I kind of decided whilst I was waiting for it to load that yes, I am going to use a steering wheel instead. Much better. And we're going to try to get this thing nicely up to speed. We're not going to try to destroy this car completely. Get it turned in here nice and sharp. Oh, and we've gone around. Well, shit. Getting this thing off the line without much wheel spin is probably the hardest thing. So I got a short shift there to help it get the wheel spin under control and around it. Wow, okay. This takes some finesse. And kind of floor it and get it up to speed. There we go. And then in here, we break. We get it uh, oh, a little bit mixed up. Okay, maybe this thing is actually slow because of how much wheel spin there is. 
I was thinking this is a bit of a drift machine, but honestly, it is actually really hard. And because of that, he's probably going to end up nursing the car around. And we do not want that. So, yep, okay, back to automation quickly. Okay, everything still seems within the right amount of areas. The only thing that were negatively affected was sportiness, which is not a requirement, and safety, which is actually still within regulation. It has also brought our price down a bit. Interesting. Okay, I've been able to get the quality of this up quite high now to plus 10, and it's still within price range and hasn't negatively affected everything else to outside of a normal area. So there we go, let's export it. And this time we've got the name fixed, it's Yandu. Am I being too nice for Rai? Ah, we'll see. So this will be the final iteration of this car. And floor it away. It's about the same trying to get it under control around there. Slow down for this corner, get a little bit of induced oversteer. And I induced it a little too much. There, there has to be something I can do to like maybe balance this out a little bit. I noticed that there was four drive as an option. Do I go and fudge that up? I don't think there was any rules against- Come on! What? Okay, this car sucks. There we go, we made it through there. Just incredibly slowly. Okay, braking and turning. Risky, but we'll try it anyway. Hard to get the power down, and we are around. Fan diddly tastic. How is this car so bad? I don't know. Well, we're gonna see what this thing does to a complete lap. So we're not giving up right away because we can really just let Rai try to get the best out of this car. Who knows? Maybe Rai understands understand something about racing in BMNG that I don't. And he might be able to control it. And sideways and around and we got it. Oh my God. That was amazing. Okay, well, that was amazing. Damn it. Come on. All right, what do we do? Maybe we narrow out the front tires even more? Bring that drivability way in? Am I being too nice on Rai? Yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> so we've fattened up the rear tires as opposed to narrowed down the front, and we are still just within our regulations for everything. It has hurt our fuel efficiency, though. So we're going to narrow down our front tires, and that'll bring us just within regulations. Okay, 15th time's a charm. And where we go... Minimal wheel spin. No, okay, there is a lot of wheel spin, but minimal squirreling. Okay, we bring it around here. We are much more stable now, though it is still a little bit of a drift uh, gremlin. It doesn't particularly want to stay straight, but at least it's not a, like a massive pendulum anymore. So it is much more controllable. And this is preferable than trying to figure out how to get a four wheel drive within the regulations. Oh boy. That really got nice and sideways, and I've gone off. Bugger. Okay, so this is not going to be a, a track beast of a car. It is not going to be anywhere near the top of his racing times that he does. But, uh, it, I mean, come on. It's a wagon. It's not really meant to be a track beast. There will be people that uh, Minimax this, get fiberglass paneling on there, maybe carbon, uh, carbon? carbon fiber, who knows? with like a, a monocoque chassis. I just went cheap, steel. I suppose I did go a monocoque chassis. All right, how does the control around here now? A little bit of sideways, but we're still actually very controllable. And we were going 200 around there, which is actually, you know what? Not uh, that bad, especially for a car that doesn't have a whole lot of speed. Oh, oh, we controlled that drift. And then we went too fast and understeered out, which is a sign of the car being too heavy with not enough downforce, that is. So, for now, we're, yeah, not expecting a whole lot from this. We are at 144, which means we're probably going to be doing somewhere around a 230 or a 240 by the time we get to the finish line. Can you straighten up, please, car? Come on, get your rack together. I want semi-slicks. <laughs> I want slicks. I just want straight-up slicks. Okay, so here we are, crossing the two-minute barrier, and we've still got a handful of corners left. There's this one, which is tricky to get into this corner. We're gonna get around here and try to keep it in as tight as possible, which is something that I always struggle with. And I have noticed that a lot of other people struggle with that corner too, with cars that are not particularly brilliant. Now this one is fairly good. I generally find that I and a few other people will get caught up if you're going a little too fast and right around this ledge right here, it'll kick the rear end out if you don't have enough grip. 
then there's just the uh, the shitty corner right here. We always want to go way too wide. And we're going to power this down. Yeah, we're even beyond the 240 mark, which I suggested. And a 243. You know, not the worst. But, uh, you know, could have been better. Could have been a whole lot better. <laughs> but I kind of sacrificed a whole bunch of this car's whatever you want to call it. Je ne sais quoi. Just to have that big 6.1 liter V8 right up the front with a behemoth amount of torque for the 1980s. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video because I did. So if you didn't, I mean, then you're offending me. How dare you? I'll catch you next time, guys. Bye.